Um, we all know that the defense budget was put on the table on Monday. Uh, roughly $553 billion is the, uh, the top line level uh, from the request. Uh, much of the comparison of that number has been to different baselines. And one of the real questions you have in looking at defense is, is it up, is it down, is it flat? What exactly is going on here? The first baseline, of course, to compare to is the current spending baseline, and that is the FY10 enacted number. We're still spending FY10, obviously, because we're under a continuing resolution today. That number was about $528 billion. That's the spend rate at which DOD is theoretically running today. Um, the continuing resolution, which is uh, being debated in the House of Representatives now, has a slightly different number for DOD, a number that's subject to amendment. There are a lot of amendments being introduced. If you've had the pleasure of watching the House of Representatives going through its incredible maneuvering on this bill uh, lately. Um, it's quite a, an amazing opportunity. There was a, a un virtually unlimited debate yesterday on an $18 million cut. This is $18 million out of $526 billion um, for boards and commissions. And, and if, they, if they're going to pick this apart at the $18 million each level, they're going to be at it for quite some time. It's enormously uh, intriguing. I think right about the time we finish our discussion today, uh, the, the section is coming up of the bill uh, that will deal with the second engine for the Joint Strike Fighter, which is uh, an amendment that's of considerably more importance, both in terms of dollars and in terms of philosophical indications. Uh, but by and large, uh, that's the second benchmark against which the defense budget is being compared. The third benchmark is actually the President's budget request from last year, um, which I would remind you, pull my number out here, was actually about $549 billion, only $4 billion less than the budget request for FY12. So if you look at last year's request, not enacted, not authorized, not appropriated, but requested, the current budget is up only a very small amount over last year's budget. In fact, uh, in many ways, less than the, the level of inflation. My fundamental concern about the 12 budget is that, it, in my estimation, it didn't really take on a lot of the tough issues facing the department, and, and that suggests that the harder choices are really in, uh, in the coming years. I, I don't want to minimize the problem set that the department faces, as Dr. Henry has pointed out. They don't have a lot of the levers available to them that were there in the early 90s. Um, you can't pull out major forces from Europe. We don't have a lot left, um, although we may see a little bit of that. I, I, there was some possibility we might have in this budget, budget and we didn't. Can't consolidate the prime contractors much anymore. Uh, hard to do another BRAC at this point or any time in the near future. Um, hard to take a holiday, procurement holiday from a holiday we're already on. Um, and and sort of significant end strength reductions or force structure reductions are also not feasible in the current, um, in current environment of a couple of ongoing conflicts. But what I think is significant is how much Gates was rolled since August of this year. Go back to what his red lines were when he first announced the defense initiatives, the efficiency initiatives. The first one, he's going to sustain top line growth at 1% a year and then use the savings to generate the additional 1 to 2 percent that was necessary to maintain essentially the program we have now into the future. Well, he got lost on that. $78 billion is being taken of the out years. He was going to produce $100 billion in savings initiatives, and the services were going to be able, the department's going to be able to reinvest that in force structure and modernization. Well, they did save 100, but 28 billion of that has to go to higher expected costs for O&M, for personnel. And so they're only getting to reinvest 70 billion dollars rather than the 100 billion dollars of services have been promised only last August. And the third thing is that force structure was off the table last August. But the only way he could square it was to start cutting force structure. 27,000 in the army. 15 to 20,000 in the Marines. And so this is Secretary Gates, who I'd argue has by far the most political clout within the Beltway 
of a cabinet officer. That's a pretty rapid change in his bottom lines.